Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey, everybody. I'm so glad that you're with me on the podcast today. I've got my friend Brian Peterson with me all the way from Santa Ana, California. Brian, I'm so stinking excited that you are here with me today and we get to share some some time together. I'm stinking excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you much for having me on the show. <laughs> well, it's kind of my thing I say, you know, I'm like, I'm so stinking excited. And I, I am because I think you're one of the coolest people that I've had. To, and I'm not just saying that, like, because we're on the podcast. I really genuinely enjoyed meeting you and your wife when I was out in California uh, several months back of that conference that I spoke at. And I was so blown away by all that you're doing. And as I was, you know, getting ready for the podcast season this year, I was like, I got to have Brian on to, for you to be able to tell your story and, and all that God's doing. So anyway, I just like give you the virtual high five, like you're, you're <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> virtual high five back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Brian, you are an oil painter, you are a passionate young man with a creative anointing. Obviously, God has gifted you in such huge areas. You founded a nonprofit called The Faces of Santa Ana, which we're going to get into in a little while. But it's interesting, you know, we were just talking a minute ago about how all that you're doing um, with Faces of Santa Ana is really blowing up on social media, and tons and tons of people are seeing that all over the world. And people can look at that and they can look at you and they can be like, wow, he is living the dream or, you know, uh, he's an overnight success or he's, you know, uh, he's worked a 10 million years to get to where he's, you know, he's at right now. They don't know your backstory. They don't know what it's taken, you know, how it's all developed. And I'd love for you to share just a little bit of how you got started as an artist and how God even began to, to move you into what you're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess my entry into finding out that I'm an artist, my fourth grade teacher reached out to my mother and said, you know, your son's always drawing in my class while I'm trying to teach. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I recommend you put him in art classes. And so I had a teacher that, that saw something in me that maybe my parents hadn't noticed, you know, like mm. teachers are important. I have like, I, right. I hold teachers really high. In, in my heart because some teacher noticed and took time out of her day to call my parents, you know? Wow. And so my parents responded and started putting me into art classes from fourth grade. And I loved it. It was, it was my place of like solitude and peace. Um, growing up, my family kind of thought I was strange. <laughs> I was the middle child. And um, I remember my parents always saying, you know, you'd always stare off into the distance and, we'd wonder what you'd be thinking about, you know? And so I had like this sort of weird middle child thing going on, but art was like my haven, you know, like mm -hmm. art was my place of peace. I loved it. And so um, it's interesting from that time growing up, I was always carrying an art box to school. I always had sketchbooks and it was just, it was my thing. It was my wow. identity. And um, so fast forward, I went to um, college at the Cleveland Institute of Art I got to study fine art at Cleveland and then also industrial design with a focus on automotive design. Wow. So I'm going to talk a lot about my career as an oil painter in Faces of Santa Ana, but my day job, I designed cars for Kia Motors, which is also very cool. artistic. So um, interesting thing, I always tell people this story because first year of college, we had the um, ability to sort of try out all the different majors, so to speak. And obviously my painting teacher, we became really good friends because she's like, this kid loves to paint. And so when I told my painting teacher that I was going to study industrial design with a focus on automotive design in my second year in college, she called me into her office, called both of my parents on the phone, and she said, your son is about to make the biggest mistake of his life. Wow. He is a painter. He's a born natural painter, and he's going to go design cars, <laughs> you wow. know? Well, wow. well, for my parents and I, we were like, well, I got student loans to pay <laughs> a lot of student loans. How am I going to make it as a fine artist? You know, right. so 
my parents almost like rebuked her on the phone. And <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, we, do, you know, we do not want to pay for him for the rest of his life, right? <laughs> so. We don't want him to be a starving artist, right? That's right. The funny thing, Matt, is I carried that term starving artist for mm. a lot of my life. People actually spoke that to me like in high school. Wow. Um, so you can be a starving artist. So deep down in my soul, I carried that as a fear. Well, you know, I think, and you can probably speak to this. I don't think any of us growing up, I know I didn't, had any kind of context for anybody that wasn't a starving artist. My mom and dad, uh, my mom was a professional musician. She ended up paying the bills through uh, being a church choir director and a high school uh, teacher. And she taught voice and piano and, you know, all that sort of thing. And so you kind of saw these people that did their best to kind of piece uh, a living together as opposed to having a steady income. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of fear for people if you don't have that context, you know, uh, for that. Yeah. And so I carried that, but the most important thing that happened to me in that meeting with my teacher is she looked at me and she said, and I'll never forget it. I can see what she's wearing. <laughs> it was like an impress <laughs> on my soul. She said, it's okay. You'll be back. You're never too old to be a painter. Mm. And, she, so <laughs> and I carried her words. I still think about it today, you yeah. know, as I'm painting. Right. And um, so that was my journey into art. I, I, I loved art as a kid and I ended up using that to channel into being a designer. Wow. And after I got a job as a car designer, I left art behind for eight years. Wow. I didn't touch a paintbrush, didn't touch a canvas. I actually stretched the canvas in my house and I carried it from house to house to house for eight years untouched. And wow. I didn't touch that canvas until I got saved. And then wow. one I painted on it. <laughs> my goodness. So you, as soon as you came to know the Lord, it was kind of like that thing got reignited inside of you. I mean, Talk about how that happened. I mean, what was that like? And yeah, me and my wife were in a rough season of life. My grandmother, great grandmother, grandmother, great grandmother, great grandmother, and my aunt all passed away within like a month of one another. Wow, we were having a hard time. My wife's um, uncle passed away at the same time, so we had a friend inviting us to church over and over and over. Um, eventually, we said yes, and we weren't like we believed in God. We believed that Jesus existed. But we had no desire to know what he said, seek his voice, learn his heart, any of that, you know. And so when we started going to church, it just felt like home. Mm -hmm. It was like literally two children coming home, the prodigals, you know. And um, I started thinking a lot about that canvas in my house. And in one church service, <clears throat> the pastor gave a sermon. And this whole sermon was about the elephant in the room. And what does it look like to address those things with Jesus? Like those big things that are too hard to tackle, too big to chew, so we ignore them. And in that church service, I got so excited. It was like the Spirit of God just put this in my heart. And I was like, <laughs> I paint an elephant. I don't know why I need to paint an elephant. So I took two days off of work. And after eight years, I painted a huge six-foot elephant in my living room and gave wow. it to my wife as a, as a wedding gift. And I said, hey, in our wedding... In our marriage, we're going to choose to always address the elephants. And this wow. thing in our house is a symbol. And that so was you're, a so you're not talking about some little eight by eight, uh, eight, <laughs> eight by eight inch canvas. I mean, you're talking like legit six foot <laughs> canvas. That is great. <laughs> yeah, for, for eight years, that canvas had been my image of fear. Because wow. I'd stare at it. I'd know that it's there. I'd know that I didn't have the courage to address it. Mm. The canvas itself was my elephant in the room, you know? Wow. Lord gave me the courage and the breakthrough to paint with him. And I remember painting it. I had like Hillsong worship on at the time. Like at the time, the song Oceans was really popular. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Over and over. And I was like painting with the Lord. And so I think that's what I've done since. I don't, I, I, I really feel like I paint with him. That's my form of worship. So talk about that a little bit. Cause I know that so many people, um, you know, all of us process our creative life differently. We all process our, relationship with the Lord through our creativity differently. And some people feel that real visceral kind of, you know, I'm painting with him, I'm creating with him, whatever it is you do. Others of it, you know, other people may feel like he's downloading things into their creative well, and then they go into their, their studio and, and they're creating, but they don't feel that visceral experience necessarily. How does that play out with you? And, um, 
have you moved from one to the other or back and forth or has it always been the same way or no i think it's it's very organic it's like you know like jesus never did the same miracle twice like, that's right created. and i think the way god uses us and works through us and especially in creativity it's different for me every time sometimes it feels like i've reached like this zone right and something's come over me and i can do a whole painting in 3 hours right mm -hmm. Other times, it's like this back and forth dialogue where I really don't feel him moving through me. I don't feel any kind of tangibly, tangible presence. And it's more of me going back and forth thinking about what I'm doing, right? Mm. And just believing that he's there with us all the time, you know? Yeah. And it is different. Each painting is an experience. So sometimes when I look at my art, I actually remember the experience I had with him painting it, whether it be the most frustrating painting it, I've ever done. <laughs> or it was one of the most easy ones that just came out like right. you know but each of them has a story in my own heart for sure i think that's one of the beautiful things about art though i've i think i've tried to really embrace that in my own life is is the mystery part of it you know because i think a lot of times when we come into art we want people to see the thing that we see or or to feel the thing that we feel when we create it and that like um, or especially for Christian artists, you know, you're like, well, I'm trying to convey this message or I'm trying to do this piece of quote unquote prophetic art. And, but at the same time, it's like, well, God may be using that process in your life, but wants to use the piece in a completely different way. And, you know, being able to release that and allow God to do what he's going to do with your work is huge. And I think that's one of the, the beautiful things I love about when I see your work is that it speaks to people on such a myriad of different levels, regardless of their, if they're a Jesus follower or not yet, uh, your work speaks. And so talk a little bit about that. I mean, is that, that releasing uh, your work uh, to the viewer and allowing them to experience it um, unencumbered by your, your thoughts and your inspiration? Is that something that you've struggled with or? Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll speak specifically to the context of faces of Santa Ana paintings. Yeah. Which that I do of the homeless here in Santa Ana. And um, man, we've seen so many things happen when we reveal these paintings, both to the subject, to the person in the piece, and to just the general public or spectators. And so in creating the piece, I'm, I'm, I have like an inner dialogue going on. <laughs> and it's always, um, it's always their story, the things that I've learned about them, the conversations we've had, their journey of living on the streets for 10 plus years, their struggles, their pains, their hopes, their dreams, you know? These are all the things I'm processing in my heart as I choose colors, choose texture, brushstroke, all that stuff. And sometimes you'd hope that that comes through, right? Yeah. Like, yeah I hope that I'm telling this person's story through my color, mood, composition, all these things, right? But the unique part is like what you mentioned, just to be open to see whatever happens, mm -hmm. you know? I've had, I've revealed paintings to clients that have been living on the streets and I've had a woman break down into tears. And she said, this looks like the exact moment when I met God. Wow. And I'm like, oh, that, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> but, you know, like, Thank you, you know? and she's just crying and she's describing the moment where she met God in prison. Wow. You know, and she's describing the color and the mood of the experience. And she's like, this is exactly how I remember it. And it's a picture of her, you know? Mm. And so then other times, I've actually had someone buy a painting from us, and the buyer said, I deal with anxiety, and I can tell that this person in the piece also deals with anxiety. Like, I see myself in the, in the subject you painted. And she's like, I got to have it. I got to buy it. It speaks wow. to me. You know? And these are things that I didn't know would ever happen, and that's what's so fun. Like, in my life nowadays, <laughs> I don't even watch television, Matt, because what's more interesting than everything I just mentioned to you? Like exactly. This real life TV and movies happening all around us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, roll back the tape because we've, we've said Faces of Santa Ana a couple of times. And for those of folks that are out there that don't know what that is and how all that started for you, take us into that because I can see it now. Okay, you've gotten out of college. Now you're working for Kia. You're, you know, living the life, you get saved, you're living with your wife out in Southern California. And then all of a sudden, you know, you just started randomly painting homeless people. I mean, there's got to be, I mean, I know the story, but take us through that story of, of how that happened. 
Yeah, it's it's amazing, man, because um, it started with getting saved, and then it 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 culminated or it grew with seeking the Lord. And I was reading all these books, trying to figure out, like almost in my own strength, <laughs> what does it look like to live like Jesus, you know? Mm-hmm. And at the time, he just starts speaking to my heart. And one night, I was on my couch reading this book called Love Does. It's by Bob Goff. Very happy, cheerful book, full of joy. But it's, it's really about loving people unconditionally. And I'm on my couch one night reading this book. And I hear these screams coming from outside of our window in downtown Santa Ana. Mm. We'd heard the screams before. They weren't new to us at all. Me and my wife used to say, oh, there goes the screaming homeless man. But so now I'm reading this book about what it looks like to love like Jesus and love Jesus. And I hear the screams of my neighbor. I said and, myself, and most oh. people would be like, I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus. <laughs> I'm praying Psalm 91 around my house, you know, I'm anointing everything with oil. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But it's funny. I didn't, I didn't even know to go there yet. I'm like, right. Christian. I don't even know if I knew the word rebuke or any of that. So <laughs> I didn't even have that. I, that wasn't even possible for me at that point. <laughs> and so all I knew was, man, like Jesus calls me to love my neighbor. Mm. Like the greatest commands, love God and love your neighbor as yes. yourself. Those are the only two things I knew about Jesus at that moment, you know? And it's probably good that it happened. That's there. right, absolutely. And so I told my wife, I was like, I gotta, we gotta get to know this guy. We gotta learn his name. Like he's our neighbor and we don't even know his name. We've seen him a hundred times. And so two days later, I was on my way home from work and I just felt that nudge. Now today, I know it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Back right. then, I just thought it was hey, let me just go find this guy, you know, and found him two blocks away from my house, sat on the floor next to him and introduced himself as my neighbor. Mm. And I, said, I introduced myself as his neighbor and said, right. hey, I'm, I'm sorry for driving by you a hundred times and never saying hello. Like, I don't want to live this way. Like, my name is Brian. What's your name? And that's how it all started. And in that conversation, I started to see like beauty as he shared his story. He told me his name was Matthew moved out from Kentucky to be a musician. He plays like six instruments. Wow. I'm looking at this guy. I had just finished that elephant painting that I mentioned earlier, probably about a week prior. And I said, out of nowhere, Matt, I just said to him, hey, can I paint your portrait? I had no idea of starting an organization, a nonprofit, any of that. It was just this honest, childlike wonder of, hey, can I paint a picture of you? I just wanted to hang it in my house, you know? And that's what I did. And people started asking, was it for sale? And that was the beginning. Well, hey, there's Matt. And, you know, one of the things that I found over the years in working with artists is that real lasting change in our life happens best in the context of supportive Christian community. And that's why I wanted to take this opportunity just to take a second and invite you to be a part of my online community called the Thriving Christian Artists Facebook Group. Listen, this group is absolutely free, and over the years it's actually grown to thousands and thousands of artists in just about every creative medium from countries all over the world. You know, the cool thing is that it's become a real place of encouragement and life for artists, just like you and me, who want to share their work, share their life, (laughs) connect with other artists, and really pursue everything God has for us as artists in His kingdom. Now listen, to join, all you have to do is just click the link in the show notes here, and answer a couple of questions just to let us know that you're a real person, and bam, you're in, okay? So listen, I can't wait to connect with you inside of my Thriving Christian Artist Facebook group. Do it now, and we'll see you there very soon. All right, bye. It's almost like when those things come out of your mouth, you say it, and then you're like, what did I just say? I mean, did, <laughs> did I say what? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but there it is, and so you ended up painting this this portrait of Matthew, and so what did you do with it at that point then? Yeah, so I painted the portrait. And then like we all do in this generation, I posted it on Facebook. Right. <laughs> like, I Instagrammed it. I hashtagged it. I read it. <laughs> all that stuff, right? Right. And then people started, they say, they're like, wow, that's amazing. Is that for sale? And Matt, I couldn't understand for life of me why someone would want a portrait of this stranger that lives in my neighborhood. Mm. Like, I didn't yeah, get it. Yeah. People were like, this is beautiful. Like, and then so I thought, wow, maybe I can sell this painting and use the money to help Matt have his dreams come true. He wanted to record an album with that money. Right. So um, that's what we did. Someone, my boss at Kia actually ended up buying it. The, the design director for Kia North America Cars wow. <laughs> said, I'll 
piece and he bought it and then I sort of went about doing the same thing. I said, this is amazing. Maybe this is why I'm here. It yeah. can't be a coincidence that I just gave my life to Jesus. I feel peace and love in my heart for complete strangers. And this amazing experience just happened right in front of my doorstep with this homeless guy. This must be what God wants me to do with my life. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I started doing. And, you know, when we were together in California, I mean, you just shared story after story after story. And of course, I'm privileged now to to have one of your pieces in our home, which is a really meaningful piece of Shannon. And, um, and I have the book, you know, that you, that you wrote and tells all these stories. And it's just incredible. Not only the, the love and encounter with the, the Holy spirit that happens, but just the transformation that starts to happen in people's lives because somebody paid attention because somebody said you're important. And I love it that, it's just as simple as that, right? It's like, okay, what's in, I always tell people, you know, if you want to, you want to walk in the kingdom, the first thing the Lord's going to ask you is what's in your hand. You know, Mm -hmm. what have I given you right now? And how can you say yes in the context of that right now? And as you do that, you're going to then start to grow in the kingdom. And I look at you guys now that when, when was this thing with, with Matthew, when was that, did that first start? It was about July, 2015. Wow. And now how many portraits have you done and talk about some of the, the crazy things we were talking about even before. I mean, just, it's like nuts. What the favor of God that is on what you're doing. Yeah. I, I've, I've painted um, over 30 portraits now. Uh, I taught a class of high school students. They painted 27. So we're well over the mark now. And um, from that, we've just seen that people really love this ability to see the homeless with new eyes Mm. because of that there's been all kind of media attention news stories um one of the the biggest ones is bbc from the uk flew out and did a story on us and lo and behold 10 million people watched the video on facebook (laughs) (laughs) only only 10 million i mean really is that it i mean (laughs) it's just it's it's absolutely nuts. Like I never imagined that, you know, like when Jesus says like, lose your life to gain your life. Yes. Yes. So much of what we do on a daily basis, my wife, Vanessa and I is like, give away our life. Like it really feels that way. It really feels that, okay, here we go. We got to make another sacrifice, but like, this feels like the Lord, you know? And that's how we test everything. This feels like the Lord, like, okay, we'll, we'll sacrifice this two hours and do this thing for this person, you know? And we just keep doing that, saying yes over and over and over. And we just see his faithfulness to, to his promises of how we should walk through the kingdom. See, I love it though, because there's this radical simplicity of just loving God, loving people, doing what's, what your assignment is in the context of the kingdom. And without any agenda, I mean, it's not like you were out there thinking, okay, who do I know at BBC? I bet my boss knows somebody that I could call to get there. I mean, none of that's happening. I mean, you're just sitting there doing your thing in the kingdom. And what does the Bible say? Promotion doesn't come from the North, South, East, or West, but from the Lord. And all of a sudden, boom, (laughs) the Lord is just like bringing, I mean, national, international television and uh, social media and all this kind of stuff to you in order to amplify his kingdom and what he's doing in and through you. And I think the beautiful thing is, like you say, we get to be along for the ride. And um, it's such a, it's such a beautiful uh, story, not only of what's affecting the person who's having their portrait painted, but of you guys, because I'm sure you guys are changed in the middle of this, right? I mean, your heart is being transformed and your reality is being changed. And Yeah, we, uh, I am completely different. It's like, like, the word of God and Jesus has come alive to us because of the experiences. Mm. Like, I feel like I can sit in my house and read the word or listen to a sermon or go to church and hear a preacher over and over and over and over again. But until I'm walking in that situation that that sermon is talking about, yeah. I don't think we'll ever really learn the depth of it. Right. Yeah. And so we've been in so many difficult situations, Matt, so many situations where we've been wrong. Like, oh gosh, like I really screwed that up, you know? Yeah. Yep. Over the last three years, like we've been walking through this refining fire and it hasn't been like condemning or anything like that. It's been like purifying. Like we've mm. been, we, we literally feel like, man, Lord, you've showed us so much 
of who you are, how to walk in love, how to, how to fight evil on so many different fronts with love, you know? And yeah. so it's like literally his word has come alive to us because of these experiences. So that's why I always tell my clients, I'm like, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for introducing us. To, like, I know your life is hard and they're always apologizing for things that they're going through. And I'm like, don't apologize. Like, it's yeah. okay. I mean, we're in this with you, you know, and yeah. we have something to learn or unlearn. Yeah, well. absolutely. You know, talk, talk to the artists out there that is, I, I know there are so many that are out there that think, you know, unless I'm a full-time vocational artist, I'm not hitting on all cylinders, you know, that I, I'm not really doing everything that I could be doing as an artist. And the thing that I love about you is that you're still working designing cars and doing that. I'm sure you love that. There's a certain creative outlet for that, that brings finances into your home and that sort of thing. And yet that's not in any way impeded or stop your passion to do what you do with your art. And I think probably in many ways uh, it's given, it's allowed you to approach your art with the freedom um, to not have to rely on it, you know, financially as a business and that sort of thing. There's always pros and cons to, to both of those, but talk to that artist out there who's who's struggling with that thing like i got to do this full time to be a real artist or but you don't right i mean you could do ex exactly what you're doing and and it be right in the middle of god's kingdom for your life yeah i think um i actually have gone like <clears throat> sort of like in and out of waves of that thinking and so if i were to speak to an artist that's in that place um you know the lord says seek first the kingdom mm. um and when I realized, when I was in that frame of mind of like, I need to be this independent artist right now, I realized that my focus wasn't on the kingdom, mm. you know, and, and the Lord has called me very, very much and a, and a lot often actually into bringing the kingdom into my workplace. Mm. <laughs> like, I pray yeah. for people all the time at work. I sure. pray for the sick at work. I minister about Jesus to at work all the time to, to people that aren't believers, you know, and I felt the Lord say to me one time, and it gave me peace. It, and he was, he was ministering to me about like, if there was an opportunity for you to ever become a full-time artist and step outside of your job, that it wasn't going to come with a bitter heart, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, I reached this place, I reached some places of like, oh, I'm so bitter that I want to be a full-time artist, but I'm stuck in a nine to five. And I love my job. It's a dream job. And it became so obvious that like, it's so important to have joy and focus on the souls around you, whatever it is, you know, like whether I'm a full-time artist, a doctor, homeless, you know, whatever it is, like my job as a son of God is to bring his kingdom everywhere I'm at. And wow. so I've been able to release a lot of that and find peace. And I think as a result of that, <laughs> the Lord is bringing the blessings and the desires of my heart, but That's it has right. to come from seeking the kingdom first. That's and right. if we're members of the kingdom, we're called to expand it, right? Mm, Grow right. it, and cultivate it. And so that's where my heart is above all else. When I'm, when I'm praying to God, when I'm in communion with him, it's about the kingdom way more than it is about an oil painting, you know? Yeah. And all that stuff comes from the kingdom. You know? That's right. It's the fruit, right? It's the fruit. Yeah. yeah, it's the fruit of the kingdom. I think for all of us, we have to get to that point where we can lay down the agenda and not in a bad way agenda, just lay down the things that we're so passionate about that can take the place that can take the priority over our relationship with the Lord and what he's called us to and get to the place where we're like, you're saying, yeah, it's the kingdom and whatever that looks like, Lord, I'm ready to go for it. And then here he comes bringing it back. <laughs> I think about, I think about you, you know, in that place of not having painted for eight years uh, and then having that huge canvas. I know that there right now are artists who are listening around the world who have that same story. They have not done their creative mojo or whatever for a number of years because they've been in a dry season. They feel totally shut down, fear, anxiety, trauma, whatever has just um, maybe just the busyness of life has been uh, consuming them and they've not been able to step into uh, what God's called them to. And I just believe uh, as you pray for people, I, I wish you'd pray for people right now, Brian, that, that the Lord would just begin to ignite and wake up uh, their hearts again to the truth of who he's called them to be and what he's called them uh, to do in the kingdom. Would, would you do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Father, we just, 
we just give you honor and give you praise. We mm. thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ministry here on earth, yeah. revealing Jesus to artists and creatives and people all around the world. Lord, I ask that you just remove walls of fear. Yeah. God, we thank you that on the other side of these walls is breakthrough. The very things that your saints, that your people are afraid of is where you are, have breakthrough for them. Mm. So I ask that you just give them an increase of their renewed mind. That's right. To understand who they are as children of God, as advancers of the kingdom, as people full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, to step into destiny, to step into purpose, to step into creativity, supernatural creativity yeah. with you, Father. That when they create, the fruit of their creation glorifies you. The mm. fruit of their creation dignifies people and loves neighbors. Mm. Jesus, I just ask for an increase in the hearts of these people. Yes, Lord. Of what you're doing individually inside them, that you love them individually and you have a specific plan and purpose. Mm. You cultivate a lifestyle in your people of seeking your heart every single day that they become addicted to you, Jesus, so mm. captivated by who you are, mm. what you say, and what you've called us to do, that they continually die to self every day so they can become alive in spirit and mm. carry out the purposes that you have on their lives. Yes, God. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Father, <laughs> we adore you. We love you all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Brian, thank you so much for being on today. I just, I love being around you. What, what you carry is, is contagious and it's a, a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. I know that folks are going to going to want to connect with you um, online on social media. So tell us how the best place people can hit you up on that and, and connect and see this incredible work that we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're biggest on Instagram and Facebook. Both of those tags are at faces of Santa Ana. Instagram is one word, Faces of Santa Ana. Facebook is Faces of Santa Ana with spaces between it. Awesome. <laughs> and um, our website is www.facesofsantaana.com. Awesome. Very easy. <laughs> well, Brian, give my love to your wife, and I can't wait to be with you guys again out in California. And thank you again so much for being on today. I know tons of people are going to reach out to you and um, and you know what, I've just, I've been feeling this the whole podcast. I, I'm believing that there are going to be people that are listening to this podcast right now who are moved to give, uh, who want to sow into what you guys are doing in faces of Santa Ana, thousand dollars, $10,000, $100,000. And I've never done this on the podcast before, but I'm just, I'm just asking, uh, right now, if that's you, if God's calling you to give uh, into their nonprofit to support what they're doing. I just want to encourage you to do it. I've done it myself personally, Tanya and I, uh, we believe in what they're doing and I would just encourage you to do the same so that they can continue to see the transformation that God is uh, birthing uh, through their life and through their art. So Brian, thanks again for, for being on, man. Well, thank you so much, Matt. You're amazing. God bless you and God bless <laughs> all of your followers. <laughs> thanks. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.